Hello everyone, it's Grumpy Gamer, and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to make an iron golem machine. This machine is going to make iron golems, you can see it right here. It's not as complicated as it looks, but um, before we get started, the first thing I need to do is just show you how to make an iron golem. You'll need four blocks of iron, and then you'll need a jack-o'-lantern, so I'll show you how to build this, and you'll understand what the machine has to do. First of all, you got to place a block on the ground. That's its feet. There's its torso there's its arms and finally you, you put a jack-o-lantern on the head and that will um, instantly turn into an iron golem there we go there's an iron golem as you can see I've done a few takes on this video so I have a little small army out here of them um, so anyway let's turn this machine on and you can see that the machine actually will do the what we just did for us and it's gonna take it about 10, 10 seconds or so to actually start up but it's pretty fast once it starts up. This thing will put out four golems a minute, every go a golem every 15 seconds. So it's going to start here in just a couple seconds. Come on. There we go. There's the feet, the torso, left arm, or right arm, and there's the left arm. And there's the head. Bam. We got a golem. And it'll just keep going over and over. As long as the machine's on and it's got resources, it'll make golems. So let me go ahead and turn the machine off. So now that you know the machine does work, by the way, you can see a whole pit of them down in there. Oh, there's a guy just fell down there. Um, so the heart and soul of this machine is the assembler. It's a advanced version of the deployer. Um, it has two modes. Here's the first mode. It's like a sequential mode where it just fires off in sequence. We're not going to use that mode. We're going to use color mode. Now there's 16 different colors here and so you can feed different, 16 different colors of wire into it. So like let's say we're feeding orange wire in right here, what that's going to do is make it execute the orange command. If we feed activate the brown wire, it'll execute the brown command. So here's orange, here, here's brown. Whenever it gets an orange command, it places an iron block. Whenever it gets a brown command, it places a jack-o'-lantern. And you might want to use more than two colors. Like You might even want to use all 16. If you want to do that, you can just use bundled cable. We'll go over that in a little while. but basically there's the gist of how the assembler works. You put program it at the top area and you put your inventory in the bottom area. You have to have materials in here for it will actually make something so as soon as this inventory empties out the machine will stop working. Um, but anyway we need to be able to move this assembler because right now it's in position to make the feet. Well then we gotta have it move up to make the torso left and right for the arms and up again for the head. So how do we do that? How do we move it around? Well, we use it, move it around with what's called support frames. As you can see, there's a three by three by three area blocks right here. These are support frames, and they move in unison. And when they move, anything attached to them moves with them. So all this circuitry and the assembler move with this frame. You see from the side, it kind of looks like the scaffolding. Here it is over here too. Let me actually remove these. We'll get back. We'll get to that in a minute. But anyway, here's the support frames. Um, here's what they look like in your inventory. But they actually attach to themselves and to any other block. So, for example, like this dirt here. If I put that dirt right there, it's attached to the frame. So when these frames move, the dirt moves with it. Now there might be times when you don't want something to stick to it like say for example the ground right there um, I can actually put what's called covers down there Here's they are, here they are right here you can make all kinds of cover cobblestone covers, stone covers, wooden covers, whatever but I'm just right now I'm just using cobblestone covers you can use any kind but if I place them on sides they um, will pre prevent the support frames from sticking to whatever's touching them so actually one good use for that is I'd want to put the covers on the bottom of this because what happens right now if, if this frame was to try to move up it's going to pull those three blocks out of the ground and I wouldn't want that to happen so I'd put covers along the bottom and so there's also times when I want to make sure something sticks so right here I have a wireless transmitter if I tr I'm right clicking right now it won't place it but now if I use these these are panels put a panel on there then the uh, support frame will stick to that. So if I actually come back to over here, all along the front here, these are all panels. If you remember, panels will stick to stuff, covers will not. So along the bottom and the back, I have uh, covers. 
the ones in the bottom keep the support frames from sticking to the platform itself and the ones in the back prevent the support frames from sticking to the wiring so um, the way we make this thing move is with frame motors let me show you what frame motors look like here is a frame motor it's what they look like in inventory um, here's what they look like right here actually let me uh, place one of these down over here so you can get a better view of it there we go now you see it has an arrow that's the, that's the side that actually needs to touch the support frames to move them so we need a screwdriver I have one around here somewhere there it is you just use your screwdriver and you can change the facing of the arrow uh, if you hold down the shift key while you touch while you click it it'll also move the face that the, the arrow is on so just right click to rotate the arrow hold down the shift key while you click to actually move which um, face the arrow is actually on but like I said you want the side of the arrow touching the support frame so if I was to put this motor over here I want to make sure the arrow is actually touching the frame so over here you can see that in operation um, when this support blocks move up they will be touching this uh, frame motor this frame motor moves it down and so if this whole frame was to move up these support frames would be touching here and if I send this thing a down command it'll slide the whole assembly down so let me show this to you in the back I have four frame motors up down left and right so here's right here's up here's left and here's down and I have a different color co corresponding to each um, direction so you need two things to make these frame motors work first of all is you need a control signal and there you can see the control signals secondly they have to have power so these things use red power two power so they need these solar panels these are the red power two solar panels this is blue alloy wire and then it's going into a bat box or a battery box you don't have to use the battery box but um, if you want the thing to run at night you gotta put the battery box next we can see the wire coming out here and the wire splits goes up here and touches this support front or I'm sorry that frame motor and then it goes down here you can't see it but it actually is touching these three frame motors too so those things all frame motors are getting power and they're also getting control signals and so basically we have six different colors we've got white yellow blue green orange and brown you can use whatever colors you want this is what I'm using um, so we got six commands there up down left right iron place iron and place jack-o-lantern and here's the machine or the control logic to make it actually all work it's not as complicated as it looks and I'll go over it in a second uh, basically you need one timer and all the rest of these are state cells and all these state cells are set to one second and there's 13 of them so it takes 13 seconds for it to make a golem but then I give the machine a couple seconds to rest so actually what happens down here timer set to 15 seconds and so all these state cells are set to one so once the machine actually starts working it'll take a 13 seconds then it'll rest two seconds and that's just give the machine time to reset and so I finally got an on off switch right here so if I was turning this machine on this timer is gonna start and it's gonna start spinning around it'll start here and go clockwise when it gets back down to here it's gonna put out a pulse and these state cells will start firing off the way these work is when they receive a signal their output will fire off uh, for one second then they turn off then they send a pulse out this one and it fires off for one second and sends out a pulse here so basically what's gonna happen this lights up for one second then this one then this one then this one it's just a sequence it's all different states of the machine that's why they call it state cells because they uh, um, control, control the different states of the machine so basically if you think about it here's how it works is you can see the different colors here it's just for all, whatever command I want to put out um, I just put that colored wire so here's the first command the second command etc etc so now this machine it's off it's always in this neutral start position when the machine's off so if I turn the machine on the first thing I want it to do is place the iron block for the feet so the first command is orange orange places iron next I want the assembler to move up that's going to be the yellow wire this motor will move the whole frame assembly up so if I move it up then the things in the torso position I place an iron block with the orange wire 
then I will move it left I do that with the blue wire so I'll move shift it left and then I'll place the arm and then I want to shift it right to because the first shift will turn it to the torso and the right shift to put it at the right arm and after I get it to the right arm position I place the arm with this one then I want to go back left then I use the yellow wire to make it go up here it is right here finally brown is the jack-o-lantern it places the jack-o-lantern on top Gollum drops down and then uh, the machine turns the assembler back to the neutral start position so I gotta send it two green pulses so it's not as hard as it looks when I designed it actually when I built all this it didn't take long at all because I just visualized what the machine was doing and placed the colored wire down for what I wanted it to do now one thing to note we're gonna go over the wiring a little bit the, the orange all the yellow all these different colors they will not touch each other so this orange wire does not touch the yellow now if I place wire of the same color like here you see I have two white wires they will touch each other so the way I get them to not connect is I put a um, um, cover strip in there and that keeps them from touching so you see I have two white wires next to each other and cover strip down here I have two green wires so I have to have a cover strip and so let me go over a little bit about this bundled cable now bundled cable works just like it does in the real world like a power harness in your car if you look inside your car under the engine you might have 10 or 15 wires all all bundled together and it just makes it everything look real clean it keeps you from having a rat's nest of wires everywhere so if you basically what they usually use like here it looks like zip ties where they're just taking like a zip ties and bundling all the wires together but anyway you just feed the wires in like that and you can uh, split the signal out whenever you want so like say this orange wire it's once it's connected to this bundle cable it's inside the bundled cable if I actually want to get the orange wire out all I gotta do is put it down here so whenever this orange wire fires off all the orange wires inside the machine inside the bundle cable fire off so that orange wire fires off this one this one this one and this one and so that's basically how bundle cables works so that's why I was telling you earlier uh, on the assembler if you want to get more than a couple wires in there you're gonna to have to use bundled cable so basically what you would have is you could have bundled cable going to it and it would prevent you from having to have what's well, gonna allow you to have all the different colors going to the assembler you do it with bundled cable but anyway that's that but anyway these were called just a reminder these are called state cells here's a timer set to 15 seconds but this thing will make uh, golems now I couldn't go into a lot of depth on how all this stuff works because you can see there's a lot of advanced concepts here state cells the logic frame motors assemblers uh, blue tristy all that stuff but hopefully this will be enough to get you started uh, but anyway this is grumpy gamer I appreciate everybody watching my videos liking them um, subscribing commenting that kind of thing uh, I do videos all the time so if you want to see more just subscribe uh, if you enjoyed this video also too like it uh, that really helps my channel out and also lets me know what people like and if I, a video gets a lot of likes I'm going to do more videos of that kind so anyways grumpy gamer we'll see you next time I appreciate you watching